Now, if there's any individual who has done more to establish the gospel, it would be Paul. It would be Paul. It wouldn't be Peter. Wouldn't be James. Wouldn't be John. It would be Paul. Paul is the one who was responsible for developing what we know as the Christian faith. Not Peter, which is why uh, two-thirds of the New Testament was written by Paul. Now remember, Paul was not a disciple. Interesting. Paul did not eat with Jesus. Paul did not fellowship with Jesus. It's questioned whether Paul actually knew Jesus in the flesh. But Paul laid out the gospel. Isn't that interesting? Paul on his road, on, on his way to Damascus, persecuting the church, struck down off his beast. Paul got a revelation on the road to Damascus. And from that moment forth, Paul's life was committed to preaching the gospel. So I would think if anybody understands what the gospel is, we can find it in Paul's writings. Would you agree? Amen. Are you at Romans chapter 1? And we're not going to read the whole chapter. But I do want to focus in on three verses in particular in the book of Romans, but I want to lay the groundwork. It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he had promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures about his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was marked out the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace. Somebody say grace. And apostleship to the obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called out ones of Jesus Christ to all those who are in Rome. You all see this? Amen. Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is writing a letter to those who are in Rome who have been touched by the gospel as a result of the witness that he gave when he arrived in Rome. So this is kind of follow-up. Now, let's, let's look at this. Go down to verse 16. And Paul starts out by saying, I am not ashamed. Look at the person next to you and tell them, I'm not ashamed. Now ask them this, are you? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Right? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then also to the Greek. For in it, somebody say in it. And we're going we're gonna to unpack this because there's a lot in this. Because in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live 
by faith. Now let's go back and let's look at this and, and pick it apart. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's the first phrase I want to look at, the gospel of Christ. The word gospel simply means, if you're taking notes, good news. If it's not good news, it's not the gospel. The gospel is not, if you don't come join my church or our organization, or if you don't believe the way we believe, you're going to hell. That is not the gospel. I was talking to someone earlier at work, and he said, do you believe in hell? I said, yes. People go through it every day. He said, but that's not what I'm asking you. I said, well, that's what you asked me. Do I believe in hell? I said, yes, people go through it every day. He said, no, do, I, do you believe God is going to send people to hell? I said, no. no. I do not believe God is going to send people to hell. And somebody's wondering, you don't? Well, what do you believe? The gospel? Somebody say the gospel. The gospel. Well, Y'all might be quiet today. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ. So whatever the gospel is, the gospel centers in Christ. Y'all with me so far? The gospel, it centers in Christ. Jesus is central to the gospel. No wonder Paul had to say, I'm not ashamed of it. Because they, they wanted to remove Jesus from being central to the gospel, and they wanted to place the effort and the way of being made right with God, they wanted to take it off of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and put it back on stuff people did. Works. That's what got Paul in trouble. We're going, we're going to see that. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. And power means force. Power means energy. Power means strength. Power does something. If you don't believe me, Take a knife, find an electrical outlet, and stick the knife in there. And watch what that power does to you. That power will knock you off your feet. Power. Somebody say power. In the gospel, there is power. That's why the early church could go out and be witnesses in demonstration and power because the gospel is what they preached. Y'all with me? I'm not ashamed of the gospel because in it, the power of God that brings salvation to everyone that believes. Now, let me talk about that for a minute. The gospel brings salvation to those who believe. Now, in the gospel is power, but you don't ever touch that power or you're not touched by that power unless you believe. 
Your believing doesn't put the power in the gospel. Your believing draws the power out of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I feel some power up in here today. Our believing reaches into the gospel and draws that power out of the gospel into our lives, to where our lives are changed through the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. See, they wanted Rome to be, they, they wanted Paul to be cultured. They, you know, they, they call, they, you know, they used to tell about, they said, what, what is this babbler trying to say? We, you know, read, read Paul's testimony sometime. So what, what, what is this babbler trying to say? Doesn't he, doesn't he understand that he has to go through all of the, 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 the nuances of, of the Greek and, and Plato and Aristotle, all the stuff that the Romans believe, you know, and the Jews got caught up in that, trying to be intellectual, trying to intellectualize the gospel. Now, the gospel is very intellectual. Don't get me wrong. The gospel should make us think. Yes. Scriptures should make us think. Because mm-hmm. there's some stuff in here that you really got to process. Not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation. Now, what is salvation? Salvation means deliverance. Salvation means rescue. Salvation means safety. Salvation means healing. Salvation means wholeness. All of that is entailed in that one word, that we use salvation. Unfortunately, when we think, not we, but we, think about salvation, we simply think it's talking about when I die, I'm going to heaven, that's salvation. No, that's a byproduct of salvation. It is a part of salvation. But salvation means deliverance, it means wholeness, it means health, it means healing, it means peace. All of that is entailed in the word salvation. And Paul said the gospel in which the power of God resides brings that to you if you believe. No wonder they would ask, well, how can they believe? How can they believe unless there's a preacher? How can they preach unless they're sent? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. But how can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach unless they're sent? Does this make sense? So if we as preachers, we as preachers are preaching the gospel as we are preaching the message of Jesus, those who are hearing have the opportunity to receive anything that Jesus has for them if they believe. So it's not about the preacher, it's about the message. Does this make sense? And what can happen is we can get caught up on the, on the messenger and miss the message. Happens all the time. We get caught up on the messenger and we miss the message. Like the messenger might be a little rough around the edges. 